From Heisman winner in 2015 to the second pick in the NFL Draft, Marcus Mariota was one of the most highly anticipated players to enter the NFL. But after struggling to revitalize the Titans franchise, he would turn into a journeyman quarterback playing for three additional teams for the next five seasons. So what actually happened to Marcus Mariota? And where did his career go wrong? To understand this, we need to go back in time to his high school days in his hometown, Honolulu, Hawaii. Marcus Mariota was born in Honolulu, Hawaii on October 30th, 1993. He comes from a diverse background, being of Samoan descent on his father's side and German descent on his mother's side. Mariota attended St. Louis High School, where he shined as a two-sport athlete in football and track. Despite being relatively unknown during his high school career, he emerged in his senior season as the starting quarterback, leading his team to an 11-1 record and state title. And during that season, Mariota threw for over 2,500 yards and 32 touchdowns. His athleticism didn't stop on the field either because he won the fastest man award at the National Underclassmen Combine and contributed to his high school relay team state title. Despite his impressive athletic accomplishments, Mariota was somewhat overlooked in the recruiting process. It wasn't until he attended an Oregon football camp in the summer of 2010 that the Ducks coaching staff noticed his potential. After watching him practice, Oregon's offense of coordinator Mark Helfrich and head coach Chip Kelly quickly offered Mariota a scholarship, even though he had never started a varsity game at the time. Ultimately, Mariota chose Oregon, one of the only two schools that extended an offer, with Memphis being the other. Mariota's college career at Oregon began in 2012 after redshirting the previous season. As a freshman, he became the first Oregon freshman quarterback to start a season opener in over two decades. Mariota led the Ducks to a 12-1 record, earning Pac-12 Freshman of Offensive Player of the Year, and the MVP of the 2013 Fiesta Bowl. His dual threat abilities were on display as he threw for 2,677 yards and 32 touchdowns while rushing for 752 yards and five touchdowns that season. In 2013, Mariota continued his dominance, earning Pac-12 All-Conference honors again, setting a Pac-12 record for the most consecutive pass attempts without an interception. Despite suffering a partial MCL tear midseason, he pushed through, guiding Oregon to an 11-2 season. His 386 total yards of offense in the Alamo Bowl victory over Texas earned him the game's Offensive MVP award. In that season, he also became the first Oregon player to surpass 4,000 yards of total offense in a single year. In 2014, Mariota returned for his junior season, and he would win the Davy O'Brien, Walter Camp, and Maxwell awards and most notably became the first Oregon player and the first Hawaii-born athlete to win the Heisman Trophy. He would lead Oregon to a 12-1 regular season record, earning a spot in the college football playoff. In the Rose Bowl, Mariota's Ducks overwhelmed Florida State to advance the national championship game. This game was crazy. I remember watching them blow out Florida State 59-20. I'll just say it was a rough day for Jameis Winston. But unfortunately, Oregon lost to Ohio State in the national championship game. Mariota would soon declare for the 2015 NFL Draft. Marcus Mariota's NFL journey is one marked with highs and lows, where initial success and promises were met with challenges due to injuries and competition. He was drafted second overall in 2015 by the Tennessee Titans. He entered the league with a fanfare, immediately selling the highest number of NFL jerseys, even surpassing the likes of Tom Brady and fellow draftee Jameis Winston. When he took the field in his first regular season game, he delivered a historic performance. Mariota threw for four touchdown passes in the first half, achieving a perfect passer rating in his NFL debut. And he became the first rookie quarterback to throw for four touchdowns and no interceptions in his first game, setting the tone for what many believed would have been an MVP season season and legendary career. However, Mariota's rookie season, while there were exciting moments, also foreshadowed some of the struggles to come. He had several standout games, including a four touchdown performance against the New Orleans Saints, and I think we all remember the 87 yard touchdown against the Jaguars. But injuries began to take a toll later in the season. He suffered multiple MCL sprains, which would sideline him for the last two games of the year. Despite playing only 12 games, Mariota showed a lot of promise, finishing his rookie year with 2,000 
2,818 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, along with over 250 rushing yards. The Titans, however, still remained a low-tier franchise, finishing the season 3-13. The 2016 season was more stable for Mariota. He started to solidify his reputation as a dual-threat quarterback, setting career highs in passing yards and touchdowns. By November, he was named AFC Offensive Player of the Month, and his four-touchdown performance against the Packers earned him AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Unfortunately, just as Mariota seemed to be building some momentum, he would face a major setback. In Week 16, he fractured his right fibula during a Christmas Eve game against the Jaguars, permanently ending his season in the Tennessee's playoff hopes. He finished the year with a career best of 26 touchdowns and only nine interceptions, showing great progress in his limiting turnovers. But the Titans missed the playoffs once again. Mariota's individual growth still wasn't enough to elevate the team as a whole. So Mariota entered 2017 with high hopes, and for the first time in his career, he led the Titans to a playoff berth. But his statistics would take a hit. His touchdown to interception ratio dipped, throwing for 13 touchdowns against 15 interceptions. Despite this, Mariota's resilience kept the Titans competitive. In Week 17, he helped secure a playoff spot by defeating the Jaguars, marking Tennessee's first postseason appearance since 2008. Somehow, Mariota led an impressive comeback in the wild card round against the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Titans rallied from a 21-3 halftime deficit to win 22-21, giving Mariota his first playoff victory. Unfortunately, the run ended the next week in a tough loss to the New England Patriots. The 2018 season was a mixed bag for Mariota. Injuries continued to be a reoccurring theme as he suffered an elbow injury in week one that kept him in and out of the lineup throughout the season, despite notable performances such as a comeback win against the Philadelphia Eagles and a win against the New England Patriots. Mariota struggled with consistency. He finished with career lows in passing yards and touchdowns, and the Titans missed the playoffs after losing losing a critical Week 17 game against the Colts. Not all the blame for a struggling franchise falls on one player though, but at this point, the narrative that was being shared around Mariota was centered around injury and just the inability to turn around a poorly managed team. By 2019, the Titans' patience with Mariota began to wear thin. After a promising start to the season, in which he threw for three touchdown passes in two of the first four games, things fell apart in Week 6 after the Denver Broncos. Mariota was benched mid-game after a dismissal performance, and backup Ryan Tannehill was named the starter for the remainder of the season. Tannehill thrived in Mariota's absence, leading the Titans on an improbable playoff run to the AFC Championship. For Mariota, the riding was on the wall. His five-year tenure with the Titans ended as the franchise signed Tannehill to a long-term contract in the offseason. It took five years for the Titans to realize that Mariota wasn't the right fit for the team. So in 2020, Mariota saw a fresh start, signing a two-year deal with the Las Vegas Raiders. He began the season on injured reserve, but made an impactful debut in Week 15 when he replaced injured Derek Carr. Mariota nearly led the Raiders to an overtime victory over the Chargers, throwing for 226 yards and rushing for 88 more, reminding fans of the dynamic playmaker he could be. But despite flashes of his old self, Mariota was relegated to a backup role in 2021 and saw limited action. In 2022, Mariota got another chance to be a starter after signing with the Atlanta Falcons. Following the team's decision to trade franchise quarterback Matt Ryan, Mariota started the season strong, showing off his dual threat ability, including a stellar performance in Week 6, where he earned NFC Offensive Player of the Week honors. But as the season progressed, inconsistency and turnovers plagued him once again, and by Week 14, Mariota was benched in favor of rookie Desmond Ryder, and a knee injury would land him on injured reserve, ending his season permanently. After the Falcons released him on February 2023, Mariota's time in Atlanta had come to a close. In 2023, Mariota signed a one-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles to serve as backup to Jalen Hurts. Though he saw limited action, his stint in Philadelphia helped reinforce the reality that Mariota's days as a starting quarterback in the NFL were likely over, at least for the time being. 
his playing time was mostly limited to garbage time minutes as the Eagles leaned on Hurts to their quest for another Super Bowl appearance. Hoping one more shot at a starting role, Mariota joined the Washington Commanders in 2024 on another one-year deal. The move seemed promising, especially after he became the first quarterback to wear jersey number zero briefly in preseason, but ultimately a pectoral injury just before the season opener landed him on injured reserve once again, stalling his chances of reviving his career. I really do like Marcus Mariota, not just as a player, but as a person. He's a great example for athletes that not everything will go your way. And when they don't, that doesn't mean you need to complain or adopt a victim mentality. Marcus Mariota is a God-fearing man from what I could tell, so regardless of what happens, I think he'll be fine.